Hafide Guam, I'm Lee Eclaveo with the Joint Region Marianas Public Affairs Office, and thank you for joining us for another segment of Island Palette. Today, we are welcomed into the home of Pika and Lenny Farron, and they're inviting us to spend a family dinner with them. But what's special is that they're going to teach us how to make Chamorro style pot roast. Come with us. And I'm here with Lenny and Pika Farron, uh, who has invited us into their home to enjoy a family dinner. And so Lenny, what exactly are we gonna be preparing today? Well, first of all, welcome to our home. Thanks for coming and having dinner with us. So today we're gonna prepare a, a family style, a uh, Chamorro style pot roast, which is traditional for a lot of Chamorro families here when you're cooking for big families. So this is, I felt like this is perfect for a nice, uh, you know, traditional Chamorro family style dinner. So what kind of ex ingredients and stuff that we're going to actually use to prepare the pot roast? We have the achati seeds in the water, uh, soaking, getting ready, and we just picked some ginger downstairs and some garlic, soy sauce on the other side, vinegar, and black pepper, and it's all going to go into the bowl with this. We're not using pork, we're actually going to be using beef, so I like to use the, the top round beef, which is just a nice a nice cut. It's got some fat on it, which is always always good when you're cooking beef for a long time. This is actually how um, my aunts and uncles make it. This is how my grandma taught us to. What, what she would do is just kind of poke the beef like this and get the whole garlic and just stuff them in there. Well, garlic always adds so much flavor, especially to meat. So this is just going to kind of sit in there. And as it, you know, it marinates, overnight. This is good for a nice family of maybe, I don't know, six to eight people. So a regular size family. Yeah, yeah, you know, or anywhere from five to eight, you know, depending, four to eight, depending how big the appetites are. Well, so I come from a family with a lot of big boys. Yeah, oh, so okay, this so will, this will feed I would them. say four. Okay. Yeah, four. <laughs> four people. So I'm just gonna put one cup of vinegar and then I'll put three cups of soy sauce. So it just, it just depends like how salty you want it. Put a little black pepper in there. I love my black pepper, so I, I go pretty heavy on that. You can go ahead and throw that ginger in the... To get the, the flavor and the color from the chotti, you just gotta kinda squeeze it. Okay. And then it'll start to come out. And then just pour it right in. Just throw some onions in there. So only half, half onion? Yeah, for this size, I would just use a half. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's really up to you. Let's just pretend that this marinated overnight. <laughs> we, we know it didn't because I just marinated it. But if um, it's going to be the same process uh, as far as cooking it. So this, this uh, started off at about a medium high, you know, to a high, just get the oil hot. Just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. So we're just going to throw this. I like to throw it down on the fat side first. Putting it on each side for about three minutes, I would say. It's always nice to get that kind of charred flavor. You just take the rest of the marination and pour it in. And we're gonna cover it up, turn it down to about medium high, and we'll just monitor it over the next hour, hour and a half. This is how we would, you know, my, my grandma's, my auntie, my family would do it this way in the pot. Uh, I like to do it in a crock pot only because I'm kind of busy these days, so uh, I'll show you how it looks, the uh, finished product, which I put in right before I went to work this morning um, and set it for about seven hours in the crock pot at, at low heat and now it's done. So let's go take a look. It's ready to be eaten. It looks delicious. It just can't wait to be eaten. So on top of having pot roast, what else are we having for dinner? Uh, so we're going to do a modern kind of take on a golai hagen suni, which is also another dish that I was, that was passed down from, you know, generation to generation, you know, from my grandmother down. And you'll always see it on the fiesta table today. Usually consists of coconut milk and uh, hot peppers, a little bit of onions, yellow ginger, the kale that's being grown here now is really nice, a healthy substitution for the spinach. Okay, so we have our, our boiling water and take your kale, cut it up a little bit, right? Then just put it straight into the boiling water. You don't wanna cook this for too long, it's kind of soften it up a little bit, just a few seconds. Just kinda 
pumps. Get the water out of there and then we want to shock it in the ice bath. It immediately stops the cooking process. Also helps to keep the color. And then cut it up to however you want, you know, however size you want. Pika's just dicing the, the onions for the, the Golai Hagen Suni, kale. <laughs> and we have to fry these onions down a little bit. Golden brown and soft. A teaspoon of, of chopped garlic. Oh, hey, I love garlic. Now we're gonna add our coconut milk. That's looking pretty good. You're gonna let that come to a boil again. Go ahead and toss in a few hot peppers. So we're just gonna finish it off with some local lemon. Yeah, half a lemon's good. All right. We actually had a ranch with a, with a pig farm. We would go and get the pig and, and cook food for the whole family. You know, then my grandmother would, would come in and pick her piece and she would just throw it in, in the marination and put it in a big pot. And by the time we're done butchering the whole pig, dinner would be ready. It is falling apart tender. It is. Thank you, Pika Lenny, for welcoming us into your home, teaching us how to make this dish and just sharing this wonderful meal with us. Well, thanks for sharing this meal with us too. You know, we're, we love having people over to, to eat some good food with us anytime. Okay. Well, <laughs> is there anything you guys want to say to our viewers? Yeah, you know, I, I want to dedicate this show to my grandmother, Rosa Tapasna Farron, who is one of the strongest ladies that I've ever known. And anybody that has known her will, will vouch for that and probably say the same thing about her too. And uh, thank you to Joint Region Military News Network for putting out our local food to the general public and allowing us to teach people how to make our traditional food. Well, thank you again. <laughs> so, thank you guys for joining us. Adios. Adios.